Hello everyone, my name is Pacha and you are watching a new episode of Wahat Jamila, our small desert zoo for the arid animal pack in Planet Zoo, of course. And today we have two main topics to talk about, two very important topics to talk about. One is of course this very special habitat for the black rhino and the cheetah as you have maybe guessed from the title of this video it wasn't in the thumbnail if you, you know, so if you only looked at the thumbnail you maybe have not seen it but yeah this is a shared habitat between black rhinos and cheetahs and i will talk about it a little bit more later on and but the second thing we have to talk about of, of obviously is that i reached 1000 subscribers last week I think last Friday at a certain hour. I don't know, remember which hour it was anymore. But yeah, I reached 1000 subscribers and we also will talk about this uh, for a, a short brief moment and what plan I have to kind of celebrate this a little bit, um, but more on that later. Before we start talk about in, talking about that, I have to say, big 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 thanks to all of you to all guys watching here that have subscribed to my channel and that maybe will subscribe to my channel in the future big big thanks to you big thank yous to you from all of my heart you made this possible in yeah one and a half years basically which is, i think really really fast for for planet zoo channel and especially now that this game is wrapping up slowly and yeah I can't say how happy I am that I achieved this. Of course, this is not a project that I where I aim to get as many followers or subscribers as possible. It is to make uh, yeah videos for you guys and to have fun with my um, love for Planet Zoo. But still, to achieve such numbers is it's truly breathtaking for me. And yeah, I have to say big thanks to you guys that this was possible. That this is possible. And yeah, without you guys, I wouldn't have been able to do that. And without all, without all the people that uh, helped me along the uh, journey, like Koki or Tobes, you guys, uh, I and of course Clemens, I have to name, especially because you helped me so much in my early days with every setting everything up and uh, stuff, stuff like that. So thank you to you guys as well. And the people that I don't name will also know who I'm talking about uh, when I'm, yeah talking about people that are awesome and without them I wouldn't have been able to do that. Right, while we are building the mud walls for this habitat, I want to shortly briefly say what I um, plan for, yeah, um, kind of uh, celebrating it and then we talk about of course this habitat and I, my idea was to do a Q&A um, for you guys where you basically can ask me any question you uh, that comes to your mind, be it about the game, be it about myself. Of course, uh, let's don't get it too personal. And um, of course, I will still, um, yeah, I decide which questions I will answer and which not. So feel free to ask any question, and um, I will then make a video where I answer these questions. So how this goes is um, over the next two weeks two or three weeks, um, I haven't decided yet exactly. Um, you can post questions in the comments under this video. Uh, on, uh, yeah, I will also do a community post here on YouTube, so you can also post your questions there in this community post, um, over on Twitter, over on Facebook, over on Reddit, uh, over on Discord, in either my Discord channel or wherever you find me or you see me. And wherever you see this video pop up and you ever, maybe you see, see it first, um, you can ask me questions, as I said, about the game, about myself, 
about my gaming, about my uh, past, my gaming past, my other past, about my um, yeah, my job or what I'm doing uh, apart from YouTube videos and such things. Keep in mind that there, please don't ask personal information stuff like uh, leaking where I'm living at the moment, um, what my telephone number is, what my email, uh, what my post address is, something like stuff like that, where, how my family members are called. If you're asking such things, I will make use of my right to ignore these questions. So if you want to have your, yeah, questions be answered in, a, in this video uh, in a video then make sure your question is uh, not of that kind and also let me know if you want to have your name your of course username on that web on that platform be named in that video or not um, if you don't say anything about it then i will assume you are okay with that i a, a name your username um, in that video otherwise let me know if you want to do that so the next yeah two weeks or so um i will Collect these questions and then we will do a, a, a Q&A video, maybe over in Raven Creek um, or in, in the front of a nice setting or something and then I will answer all your questions as good as I can. Right, um, as I said, I will also make a post about this um, on Twitter and on here on YouTube in the community post. So keep an eye out for that, for the more concrete informations uh, in the next days uh, so that you know what to... Yeah, on what to keep an eye out for and what to yeah you know what i mean <laughs> but yeah <laughs> with that all the way <laughs> let us talk about this habitat as i said we are building a habitat for the black rhino and the cheetah and this video is not the full habitat as you have most likely seen in the intro sequence because there was no actual building in the background there's only this plaster wall this is because this is a two-part video basically the other half will be released next week um simply because it would have been yeah too long for the whole video to uh to be on youtube um and i didn't want to give you an over half an hour long video um, also not good for my voice talking that long so I decided to cut it in half in this part we will only do there's a main show area um, where the animals live and um, all the fences um, all the guests path and everything we will do that and then next week we will focus on the indoor building because this will also have some areas for guests in them we will focus on that on the backstage for the rhinos and cheetahs also that, that and then some smaller stuff like um, path decorations things like that you will see that then in next week's video when that one is out so there will also not be a showcase at the end of this video um simply because i don't want to show the same exhibit twice and and so i will make the showcase um, yeah, walk through, walk around next week at the end of next week's video. So this video will end with the speed build. There will only be a speed build in this video. But yeah, rhinos and cheetahs might for some of you, um, maybe also if you are in the US, I don't know any zoos out of my head that have that mixture, might sound a little bit crazy um, mixing a yeah, predator with and prey animal um, with a herbivore, with a carnivore, but um, this is not something that is, um, yeah, came out from my mind, from my crazy imaginary, imaginary mind um, that I dreamed of. No, it is a, a real mix, mix that is happening um, right as we speak and that I also was witnessing uh, myself um, here over here in a zoo in Germany and People who know me that then yeah, people who know me know that I especially love the zoo of Leipzig, um, and I also think it's one of the best zoos uh, in Europe, if not the world, at least from what I have seen <laughs> so far. And they have their Kivara copia, it is what it's called, and there they mix black rhinos and cheetahs. They also mixed in Barbary macaques for quite some time. But um, this didn't get, went well um, that good with the cheetahs, so the Barbary macaques have their own little area now and are only allowed to get outside when the um, only the rhinos are out and when the cheetahs are out they have their own area. But they still mix uh, cheetahs, two females, with their three um, African black rhinos and so far it goes really well. They each other mind their own space, they don't really um, fight with each other or 
there are any tensions as far as I know between these animals. So it is a mixture that is possible, most likely also because uh, cheetahs are quite relaxed uh, when it comes to other uh, animals and uh, not like lions or tigers or jaguars. Um, cheetahs are a little bit more skittish, a little bit more uh, nervous and uh, yeah, like to mind their own business and not interact with other animals because they are quite fragile um, despite being a, a large cat, a big cat. They are not a big cat per se, but you know what I mean. Um, and so that is what I wanted to make this mixture and the idea for the design of the habitat to also talk a little bit about that is also partially inspired by the Quaria Copier. Um, for people who don't know, a Copier is a rock formation, um, it's a type of rock formation found in the Venars of Africa, where you have very large boulders, round boulders and rock formations uh, sitting in the nowhere of the, uh, the Vena, um, where many animals live like lions, like cheetahs, like um, smaller uh, prey animals uh, live and hide there uh, in these giant rock formations and this is what the Kuvara copy in Leipzig is modeled after and I wanted to kind of also have that but not in a very copy style way but uh, um, I decided to go with these mud walls like this is some dried up mud valley maybe some dried up river valley um, like the guests are looking through cracks in this in this valley into the area where some rhinos live, where some um, cheetahs live and if we ever get baboons in this game then I would also really love to add baboons to this area. Maybe with a separate um, area that is not connected to this main um, exhibit but still I would love to add that because it kind of gives me the feeling that it, that it will fit right away. Um, main part of this uh, episode will be these fences at the moment we are build we are making the very simple rhino fences uh, if you don't know you don't need much to keep a rhino away um only some yeah, either some concrete metal or a very sturdy uh, wood pillars uh, against your fences keep a rhino away pretty easily because they can't fit through them and of course we also we still need some large um yeah some large mesh fences for the cheetahs so they don't they do, do not escape and the viewer area that you see right at the moment on the left side is um, yeah, separated from the animals via a mode that goes I think two meters deep and then there is some hot grass at the bottom hot grass for people who don't know is a type of electrical fence that imitates real grass or plants um, so it doesn't yeah looks too out of the out of the blue when it when it is in a very lush uh, habitat. There's also a type called uh, hot um, reed that looks like yeah, water reed if you use it in, in water. I also made that for Raven Creek if you want to check it out. Uh, but yeah, this hot grass basically prevents the cheetahs from getting too close and also the rhinos from getting too close to the guest viewing area. And what we are building at the moment, um, as you saw, I later added this little outcrop, outcrop uh, over here, is adding uh, yeah, a rhino defensive gate because this area to the right that you will, as you also saw at the end of the cinematic intro, is only for the cheetahs and the rhinos of course can't fit through that little gate that we just made there in the background. Um, so the cheetahs, if ever they need a way to get away from the rhinos can go f to that area, can slip through uh, under that gate and yeah, have their own private space. And of course we, we are dealing with rhinos so we need to way to separate the rhinos, uh, the two animals if possible. So we are also building a very large um, electric gate over here that you c would be able to close from the inside of the building to either separate the rhinos from the cheetahs entirely and have two separate yards or to separate the two rhinos from each other if they have a problem with each other, which can also happen, especially with male and female rhinos um, during the breeding season, season when the males getting a little bit more frisky and uh, a little more aggressive towards the females. Um, and we, but we, we don't want to breed them, of course we have to separate them. But yeah, these are um, the main things about this habitat. Of course, we will later add all the foliage to this area and 
of course, we also have a, need to have a mud bath. Uh, initially, initially um, and you also maybe saw that in the beginning of the video, I want to have a water bath there, like a water pool area for the rhinos to swim in, um, until I learned that for once the yeah, black rhino in game can't swim. <laughs> By the way, neither can the white rhino, the white, uh, eastern white, no, southern white rhino that we got for the Africa pack, both can't swim in game, only the uh, Indian rhino can. And then when I was very angry, um, yeah, talking to people on Bro Nation about this, uh, Just Goran actually um, sh uh, said or explained to me, and I also later confirmed this and looked this up um, that black rhinos, despite them being able to swim, don't really like water. Um, in fact, all African rhinos species don't really like water. Uh, it's more the Asian rhinos, like the Indian rhino or the Javan rhino, that are excellent swimmers. Um, African rhinos usually avoid deep water and if they take baths, then it's in very shallow pools or in these mud baths, um, simply because they are not as not that good in swimming. They can if they need to, but they would also be drowning very quickly if they don't reach land. So that's why rhinos can't swim. And that's also why Frontier most likely didn't give these animals the ability to swim. So um, it was not a mistake on their side. It was yeah, true to the real life fact that they don't swim. So my idea with this uh, bathing area over there um, had to be changed into a mud bath area, which is also very cool and will looks really, really nice because there is a viewing opportunity right in front of this mud bath, so you can see them enjoying yeah, these <laughs> muddy deaths and all the mud and stuff f uh, that prevents uh, in insects from um, eating their skins and draining their blood and such things. Very cool. I'm also adding these little planters in the middle of the habitat, um, not because I did I gave the animals too much space, simply because to break up the uh, habitat a little bit, otherwise you see the whole habitat uh, right in front of you and the animals have no way to hide or escape uh, at certain points. And that's why I decided to add these little islands so the animals have some areas to retreat to, to get a little bit of shadow also inside the habitat because we will not have that, we have, will not have any trees that the animals can reach inside um, this exhibit and also not on these uh, fake mud walls, which I really like now with the plants, by the way. Um, so these islands also keep, uh, act as a little bit of a shadow giver to the animals. Of course, the area with the, um, with the sheet that is a little bit more heavily planted because the rhinos can't get through that area. Um, they yeah can't destroy them otherwise if you are dealing with large animals like rhinos uh, elephants or um, hippos usually the habitats are pretty barren because these animals are known to destroy anything <laughs> in their path that they can reach uh, be it trees that they knock down to rub themselves against it or simply because to test their strength out uh, during um, yeah, the breeding season for example so um, that's why we don't have any trees and any trees that we have need to be secured and either in high places or with heavy fencing and I went for the high places option. We also will add another feeder over here for the cheetahs that draws them a little bit closer to the guests so um, the guests can see them more up close when it's feeding time, which I think is a really nice idea. And yeah, now we go over to the planting, the usual stuff. We start with the rocks first, uh, big rocks, small rocks and smaller, and then the smallest rocks. And then we do all the grasses. We do all the, yeah, bushes and plants that are in the habitat. I try to keep it bare, not not, not barren, but uh, bar more barren than other habitats, but still interesting. And I like how it, uh, how it looks in the end. And you will see that next week with the full showcase. And you also saw parts of it in the intro cinematic. And also I'm trying, still trying, and maybe next week we have more luck. I'm trying to get a King Sheeta variant, uh, which is a variant that got added with the Grasslands pack, I think. Um, if you don't know what a king cheetah is, it's a skin variation, a color variation of the normal cheetah um, which with very large spots that also merge together at uh, some occasions. Uh, so far I only got a spotless cheetah in game, and but the king cheetah would really uh, something I would love to see in this exhibit simply because I think they are the most beautiful variant of, of a cheetah. 
Anyway, um, I will tell you next week how this, uh, yeah, trying to get a king cheater went. <laughs> but anyway, I will now leave you with the rest of the music, the last couple of minutes, um, yeah, for some music. And then I hope you enjoyed the video so far. If so, maybe consider giving a like or subscribing to the channel um, to support me in the future and don't miss any video. And then I wish you a great time. Stay safe. And yeah, I see you next week with the second part of this Rhino Habitat. And don't forget to add, yeah, to write your questions down in the comments or on other social media pages. Que any questions that you want to ask me for future Q&A. So, see ya and bye bye.